Hey everyone and welcome to the first video of this typography series for PSD Tuts. Now type may seem like a pretty basic concept, but once you really dive into all the options that are available to you, your type-based designs will have an endless possibility. This first video is going to guide you through the basics of the type tool to get you started with adding text in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and take a look. First off, like most of your tools in Photoshop, you can find the type tool on the left hand side of your workspace in the tools bar. By default, the horizontal type tool will be visible, but if you take a look at the bottom right corner, the small arrow indicates that there are hidden tools that are available to you. Holding your mouse button down will reveal the vertical type tool and the type mask tools. For now, let's go ahead and stick with the horizontal type tool. So now that your horizontal type tool is selected, what the heck do you do with it? Well, there are two ways to get started. A single click on your document will create a starting point for you to type with no horizontal constraints. Even once you hit the edge of your document, the type will continue to move horizontally. Of course, you can press the return or enter key on your keyboard to skip to the next line. And once you finish typing, the check mark on the top will complete the edit. The second option is to create a paragraph text block. This can be done by dragging out a box similar to a rectangular marquee selection. This will define your paragraph's bounds. This way, once you hit the edge of your block, the text will automatically move to the next line. And depending on the paragraph settings, which we'll take a look at in a future video, you can enable hyphenation and even justification. If you're working on a block of text for a brochure or a book, using a paragraph text block may be your best bet. All right, so now that you know which two options are available to you, let's go back and focus on single line text for a moment while we get the basics down pat. In traditional Photoshop fashion, at the top in your options bar, you'll be able to customize your type. If you've ever used a word processing application before, you should be familiar with many of these options. First of which is your font selection. All of the fonts that have been installed on your computer will be available to you to choose from this dropdown. And to the right, you can see a preview of the font to give you an idea of what it looks like. Now to some, that font preview may be a little bit small. If you want to enlarge or decrease the size of that preview, in Photoshop CS6, under the type menu at the top, you're going to find the font preview size submenu, where you can choose from a variety of sizes to fit your needs. Now if you're still running Photoshop CS5, this option is available to you in Photoshop's preferences. So now that I've chosen a larger font size preview, you can see that it's definitely a lot bigger, a lot easier to see. I'll go ahead and select this font for now. Another way to select your font is to simply type it in. If you select the current font name in the text field, you can type in exactly what you're looking for. For example, I can type in Helvetica, and if by chance there are multiple versions of Helvetica, I can use my up and down arrow keys to cycle through the list alphabetically. Perfect, we're going to go ahead and stick with this. Now the next drop down to the right is the font style. Many of you may be familiar with the basic styles like bold and italic. For simple fonts, you're going to find the bold and italic options here, but for some more of the advanced fonts, you may find more options. As you can see here, this font, in addition to the basic styles, we also have styles such as light, medium, and condensed. And of course there are previews for each style to the right. Finally, don't panic if the style drop down is grayed out. Some custom fonts don't have any style, so don't worry about it. Now moving over to the right, we have our font's size, another option you should be familiar with. In the drop-down, you can choose from a range of sizes from 6 points all the way up to 72 points, but if your design requires a larger font, you can simply type in your font size of choice. For example, for this design, if I needed a 200-point font, I can simply type in 200PT, which is short for point, and press return or enter to accept. By default, your font size will be displayed in points, but if you have the need to work in another unit, you can change it in Photoshop's preferences. Pressing Command or Control K will open up the preferences, and you're looking for the Units and Rulers section. In here, you can change points to either pixels or millimeters. However, if you only need to use pixels or millimeters on a rare occasion, you don't necessarily need to change the unit within preferences. Back in the font field, if I know I need to type a word that's 3 inches high, I can type in 3IN and Photoshop will display a 3 inch font in points. The same goes for pixels and millimeters. Pretty simple stuff, right? I hope so. Next we have anti-aliasing. This may be new to some of you. Anti-aliasing basically controls how the edges of the font are displayed. 
In most cases, you'll want nice smooth edges. But if you're mocking up a website, you may want to change the anti-aliasing to sharp to better match what fonts may look like in a browser. But 95% of the time, you'll want this option set to smooth. Moving on over again, we have our justification options. Whether you want your text lined up on the left, the right, or the center, punching in any of these options will nicely line up your text for you. The last option we're going to cover in this video will be the color of your text, another fairly simple option. Your text color can either be set before you start typing or after the text has been created. Either way, this color picker will control your text color. Now it's important to note that this is different than the color pickers that you have in your tools bar. Those are your foreground and background colors. Once the text has already been created, you must change the color using the color picker that's in your options bar when your type tool is active. Once a new color is chosen, the whole text layer will change to that color. But in a future video, I'm going to show you guys how to change individual words and letters within a single type layer. And that'll just about cover the down and dirty basics of the type tool, but there's so much more to cover. In future videos, we're going to take a look at modifying individual words, individual characters, how you can make them larger, smaller, space them out differently, and a whole lot more. We'll see you soon.